It's a huge game of risk. Questions to be asked. Are we still in the race? Build for the future. Go with what we have. Decision time strikes baseball as the midnight trading deadline draws near. Welcome everybody to Baseball Tonight alongside Dave Campbell, I'm Carl Ravitch and I have an eerie feeling we have done this before. Remember the expansion draft after everybody was selected? All of a sudden people ran out with uh, sheets of paper to announce deals that have been done. It is midnight, now, the trading deadline is officially over. That does not however mean just because we haven't heard a name that they haven't been moved. Of course you have to notify players, there are games still going on. So every deal is technically done. That doesn't mean it has to be announced though uh, for what could be a couple of hours. That being said, said uh, let's bring in Peter Gammons now who is uh, on Cape Cod at his home and has been working the phones all night uh, we heard names throughout the day there have been a number of deals done but Randy Johnson uh, last night Dave and I talked about the fact this could go down to the last minute is it doing just that well it absolutely absolutely is I mean one of the things everybody was watching in Seattle mm -hmm. since the Mariners thought they might be getting Hideki Arabu mm -hmm. in the deal of course Arabu has been pitching you know so that, that went right down to the deadline as well I mean uh, Harold Reynolds has, has called in and said there might be a press conference it's one of those things that they could do at about 1230 as long as they've notified the league and all the players are out of the game they can note they can make this official anytime they want any feel, Peter, for uh, sort of the way things have transpired with regards to, uh, you know, what Woody Woodward has been listening to tonight, whether uh, players have been taken off lists, on lists, uh, the deals have been sweetened, the deals have been sort of soured by the fact that it's gotten to such a late hour? Well, I think that what he's done is try to, to throw as many names out there, and I think he's done a pretty good job at it. I mean, he's, he's sent out kind of smoke screens saying the Dodgers are in it, the Astros are in it, I think the Astros were, the Indians, but he's tried to play that game between the Yankees and Indians, and I think we'd all agree that it really is in the Yankees' best interest just to have Randy sit there in Seattle, figuring that, hey, what the heck, as long as he's not in Cleveland, he's not in Boston, they don't have to worry about him, but... Um, you know, if the Yankees felt that he was going to go to Cleveland at one minute of 12, they probably would give them is not everything they wanted, but at least give them 60 cent on, cents on the dollar. <laughs> I hear you. Okay. All right, Peter, you hang in there with us for a uh, next couple of minutes here as we move along on baseball tonight for the next half hour. Dave Campbell, as far as the Mariners go here, uh, this has been a surprising night, not only from the fact that they now have said at least right now, there is no press conference scheduled. Again, as Peter pointed out, Harold did call in and say they're setting up a press conference, but the Mariners have said right now there is no press conference. Doesn't mean no deal by any stretch, but no press conference. Uh, and the other big teams haven't really made a lot of the moves. You surprised? Uh, yeah, because we all thought that Randy would be the first domino, but we also thought that it might get down to the end. Uh, that could have stymied some teams that thought they were in it. I, I think the interesting thing still is, I mean, if I go by my gut instinct of need, I still think if he's being dealt, it's going to be Cleveland. And I have nothing to go by other than just maybe common sense. Well, relative to the Yankees, certainly they do need him a little bit more uh, you know, than the Indians do. I should say the Indians need him more than the Yankees do. As far as the uh, trading deadline goes, the Expos, since 95, they have made a deal of some kind or another at the deadline. Whether it's uh, to give away big-name players or just small-name players, the Expos have been involved. And once again, Montreal sheds payroll and experience and helps out a team that believes they are contending. They send Carlos Perez and the shortstop Mark Rezolanek to Los Angeles for Wilton Guerrero and three prospects. Now, Perez, of course, broke his nose in a car accident that he hasn't pitched. He was scheduled to go tomorrow night. Mark Rezolanek, of course, uh, hasn't been happy in Montreal for a couple of years now. One of the restructure is deal. Now, though, a new lease on life in L.A. No question. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, uh, it's going to be a good situation, I think, there. And, and uh, uh, I'm definitely very nervous. Wilton uh, was a key to the deal. Uh, Lily was a key to the deal. You know, they're all part and parcel of looking at young players and the Dodgers were one of the few organizations that had the players and that we fit together that well and uh, you know we we think it's gonna work out great. We watched Jim Beatty tonight he made some moves sat down had a little dinner and watched his ball team play but as far as uh, this deal goes Grezelanek was not really happy at all there and some of the young guys there's certainly tremendous upside when you look at what Ted Leland's been able to do Peter Bergeron is a 
is a good hitter who steals bases? Well, Guerrero is, is a talent at second base, but talking to some of the Dodger people, he may be the most adventurous, wild, undisciplined base runner around. Brezzolanic, you just wonder, they got Vizcaino at shortstop. They got a little bit of a log jam there. Vizcaino on the DL right now with a sprained ankle, but a lot of money going for one position. So there is the deal again. The Dodgers pick up Grazolanic and Carlos Perez, and as uh, Dave pointed out, there could be a glut at shortstop. We'll see how that plays out. But certainly the Dodgers, since Fox has taken over, their face has changed more than any other in baseball. Well, with regards to the Mariners, they all admit uh, within the last 48 hours now, something they hadn't admitted before, that this Randy Johnson trade deal has been a huge distraction and it has affected players in the way they have played on the field. The Yankees have had no such distractions and those two teams get together. Everybody thought that maybe Randy Johnson, instead of pitching for Seattle on Sunday, would be pitching against them. The game you can see on ESPN. In this game, Hideki Arabu, the starter, and Junior went fishing and Junior was gone. Jorge Posada against Jeff Vicero. Yard. Number 12 for Jorge, and the Yanks are staked to a 2 0 lead. Bottom four. It's three zip now. And A Rod goes the other way. Thin air inside the ding dome. 32 for Rodriguez. The lead is 3 to 1. In the six, it's 4 1. Jay Buter charging. Brocious' looper is there. Hits the turf hard. A little ginger on the left knee. Looks like Buter is going to be okay. Hideki, not okay. Second time in the game that Edgar Martinez hit a ball hard to that spot. The first time, Irabu got lucky. This time, he didn't. Edgar's got 23. Next batter, Sigi, and guess what? You can tell by Hideki Irabu's body language, he didn't put it where he wanted, and Sigi did. Back-to-back -back jacks, so the Mariners sneak right back into this thing. The Yankees are on top, 4-3. to three. Home runs the story in this game. And, of course, the story in Seattle so far, just joining us, no word yet on whether Randy Johnson has been traded. There was rumors of a press conference being set up. It has not. And just because it has not been set up and nothing's been announced, that doesn't mean he hasn't been dealt with. But he'd also expect for it, if there was one, to be, take place after that game was over. And, of course, the uh, 2 a.m. Eastern edition of Sports Center will be here to get you up to date on anything that goes on there. All right, to the Red Sox and the Angels, Mike Stanley. He gets the start at first base in his first game with the Red Sox since returning. He grounds out to third. What this means is Mo Vaughn is your designated hitter, something he wasn't too thrilled about. Bottom two, no score, man on, and Brett Saberhagen puts it over the plate. Garrett Anderson's hitting streak stays where it is. Cecil to third, he later scored its one zip. Omar Oliveris pitched real well in this one. Yeah, he pitched very well early in the season for him, and then all of a sudden had a lull. There he gets the ground ball double play. Cecil down to the shortstop, Desarcina, to get Garcia Parra. Continuing with a good sinker to short. This will be a 6-3 double play, and when Oliveris is throwing ground balls, he is tough. Bottom seven, Anderson up again. Can he get to 28? He does. His hitting streak at 28, the longest streak of the year. He's made great contact. But in a close game, the Red Sox try to mount a comeback. Can they do it? Darren Lewis with men on second and third and one down brings in Donnie Sadler. So the Red Sox have come back against the Angels and tied this thing. In the top of the eighth inning, they continue to bat, and we will continue to keep it posted. The Angels now making a change. Oliveris is out, and they bring in somebody from the bullpen. The St. Louis Cardinals, of course, have that great story all year long. Mark McGuire, they have sold tickets for September because of Mark McGuire. Not necessarily because the team is in the race. Now comes the admission they are no longer in a race in the West. However, it is the American League West that they have dealt to. Texas Rangers picking up some very key components in a division in which they have battled the Angels and each have come in the wrong direction. Texas makes huge strides today. Tony La Russa about where all the pieces of the puzzle will fit. Royce and Todd are guys are free agents and in their place we've we've got guys that we've will be part of our situation next year. Tatis has got a lot of upside as a young third baseman. Very difficult position to fill nowadays. And you have uh, Oliver who we like a lot. Uh, we have a couple of guys here like Witt was a teammate of his. Um, McGuire hit against him. You know they like him so I think he's gonna be a good left-hand starter for us. All right, Tony, thank you. And here's how it looks on paper. Todd Stottlemyre, they get the right-handed pitcher, very clutch, likely to move right to the top of their rotation. The shortstop is Royce Clayton. He has struggled, but feels as if maybe a change of environment will help him. Darren Oliver certainly needs a change of environment. 
Tony alluded to Fernando Tatis and his upside. Yeah, and with Royce Clayton leaving, the Cardinals do have a lot of depth at shortstop. They have a youngster in double A named Adam Kennedy. They're extremely high on, so he could make the jump from double A to the bigs next year. Kevin Elster, by the way, was released, and I'm sure somebody will snap him up. There are teams that do need shortstops. The Rangers weren't done dealing with just the Cardinals. They also uh, flushed out some players from the Florida Marlins. Todd Zeal, 276 batting average. We know what a good hitter he is down the stretch. And, you know, like Gonzalez with all the RBIs, Zeal can do that too. And Todd's with his seventh team in the last four years, tying a major league record set by three other guys. But he can help them out with the bat. Dave Dombrowski, what a weird situation he's been in. He said, Todd, congratulations, by the way, on the trade. All right, those Texas Rangers against the White Sox. The deliver by John Burkett gets past Pudge. And quickly, this game is tied at one. Top four still tied. The big hurt at the plate. Rumors in the last 72 hours that the Blue Jays turned down, the Rangers, I should say, turned down a deal for Clemens because they didn't want to give up Rusty Greer. One of the reasons we just shot. Well, the big hurt thinking everything against him this year, but he finally hit one where the only person who can catch it is a fan. Bases loaded, Grant Slam, 6-1, Sox. So one guy goes deep and two guys. How about Albert Bell and what a way to finish up the month. 16th home run in July. That's a new major league record for this month. His 33rd of the season. Chicago wins by a final score of 10 to 2. The White Sox, uh, there were rumors about Robin Ventura moving, but Ron Shula said tonight that is not the case, that Mr. Ventura will stay with the Chicago White Sox. All right, take a look at Albert and the numbers he has put up in July. Most home runs, 16. In June, it was Sammy Sosa. He had 20. In May, in April, McGuire the most through the end of the month. And uh, it has been an absolutely outstanding season with home runs. Only on a trading deadline day will those guys sort of take a backseat to anything. The Indians battling the A's. <laughs> At one point, there were 80 minutes left to go. Tom Candiotti got Brian Giles staring. David Bell. That is slower than your average knuckleball. Season high five Ks by the end of the third for Candiotti. I figured the Indian bats would be just about on time for Candiotti after playing 17 innings last night. Who's that? Professional hitter, isn't it? Matthew stares, climbing the stairs. The A's go up one zip, his 17th. Mike Blowers facing Bartolo Colon, and Blowers a looping single to right. It scores Jason Giambi. It brings in Scott Spezio. The Oakland A's go up by a score of four alone at that point. And it is now in the bottom of the fifth inning. And again, Cleveland apparently not making many moves. And we're all sort of waiting here on Seattle. If Randy Johnson were to do anything, the A's, by the way, pick up Ed Sprague. And of course, he has been released for a minor leaguer. Jorge Posada hit one. Jorge Posada has hit two off Jeff Becerra. And the Yanks now with a two-run advantage over the Mariners in the bottom of the eighth inning. Two for four, 12 and 13. Hideki Arabu has been effective when he's gotten the ball over. It's just when he's put it in the wrong places. He's got six Ks through seven and one walk. The American League East also out west, the Red Sox. Battling the Angels and Mo Vaughn, who has not come up with clutch hits over the last two weeks for the Red Sox, does so here. He brings in Mike Benjamin in the top of the eighth inning. And Boston on top of the Angels by a score of 2-1. They are in the top of the eighth. We'll keep you posted there. But another very strong outing from Brett Saberhagen. And considering the Red Sox have apparently not made any moves to bolster their pitching staff, they will rely on Brett Saberhagen even more. All right, still to come here on Baseball Tonight with Dave Campbell, we'll talk more trades. These weren't only the ones that were done today. The Mets also got busy, and they weren't the only teams. They were busy early, they were busy late. The Orioles also picked up one of the prize pitching prospects. We will talk about the Birds moves. Also ahead of us, we'll check those home run heroes. Sammy Sosa at his stroke. Mark McGuire, would he have his? We've seen the Mariners. Junior yet to go yard, but is anybody hotter than Mike Piazza of the Mets? their deals and his deal when we come back. You concerned about losing more hair? Do you wonder how much further it will go? Do you wish you could do something about it? Well, now there's a pill for men with certain types of hair loss. 
Introducing Propecia. In clinical studies, the vast majority of men, 83%, maintain their current hair count, and most, 66%, regrew some hair. Take it daily and you could see results in as little as three months. Propecia is for men only. A small number of men experience certain sexual side effects. Each occurred in less than 2% of men. Women who are or may potentially be pregnant must not use it or handle broken tablets because of the risk of a specific kind of birth defect. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist and read the consumer information they can provide. Propecia. Helping make hair loss history. Zima. Hey. How is that? Huh. Very refreshing. Seems I'm late for our little reception. No worries. I'm driving this new Subaru Outback. Shortcut. It's got full-time all-wheel drive. It's like my other Outback. So I can take it almost anywhere. It's like my other Outback. In fact, there's only one difference, really. Matilda. It's got this stylish rear end to go with her. Nice trunk. The all-new Outback Sport Utility Sedan from Subaru. Time now for the hair raising play of the week. Loaded and here's Sosa to face Embry. And he drives one to center. All the way back. This could be Grand Slam. Grand Slam. Sammy Sosa. His first of his career. The pitch to Sosa. Sammy hits a high fly ball. All the way back to left. Can you believe it? Another Grand Slam. Another Grand Slam for Sammy Sosa. Hair-raising play of the week is brought to you by Rogaine Extra Strength for men. Take a big inning, big inning for the Red Sox against the Angels. Top of the eighth, they continue with two on. Nomar Garcia Para lift off and deep into the bullpen. The X got a ball to maybe give back to Nomar, but he has been carrying this club since he's been thrust into the cleanup hitter spot. The Red Sox now up 5-1 on the Angels. Shigatosi now gets out of it and they go to the bottom of the eighth, but a very big inning for Boston on the night that they apparently have made no moves. In one update, Randy Johnson still seen in the Mariner uh, dugout. So perhaps, just perhaps, they're not moving Randy Johnson at all. Be very, very interesting. Well, as the clock crept towards 10.30 in the East, none of the teams expected to make moves. Yankees, Indians, Braves had done anything. Atlanta's name had popped up in the Randy Johnson sweepstakes. Remember, I mean, this is a team that got Denny Nagel when they had the best staff in baseball in August of 1996. But the Braves uh, aren't afraid to go out and make a move. It doesn't appear as if they have either. Ray Langford takes a Maddox pitch, and it's gone. His 18th, that's the first home run given up by Maddox in 84 innings. Kent Merker pitched beautifully. He left in the ninth with a 3-2 lead and one on. Lance Painter now pitching. Painter is going to stay in to paint, uh, pitch to Greg Colburn. Just picked up yesterday from the Rockies. First of all, Andrew Jones hits a pop-up. All right, and John Mabry tries to come in, and guess what? Yo, look out. Placido Polanco goes down. The ball drops in for a hit. Here's Colburn. Here he is. He threw him a two-seamer on a 3-2 pitch and struck him out. Now he's got to get Michael Tucker. Gets him with a sweeping breaking ball. Painter gets the save. Merker gets the win against his former teammates. Walt Weiss error costly in this game. A couple of games now. Maddox has looked outstanding and not gotten the support. His eighth complete game gives up two earned runs. Look at his 1-6-1 ERA. And yet he is your loser in this game as they drop to 14-5. and five. No McGuire home run at Turner Field, 11 at bats. Mark McGuire, the next 29 games, 18 of them will be against the Braves, the Mets, the Pirates, three of the top four teams in baseball, giving the fewest home runs. He'll have his work cut out for him. Something to keep our eye on there. We move along now. Rockies, Cubs, daytime. Ellis Burks, over for three in his last game as a Rocky, but Sammy, who is not going anywhere, 15 mile an hour breeze. You know what? That can't hold Sammy. His 42nd home run. The Cubs are up one zip into the wind off Jamie Wright. 
Two batters later, one on for O. Henry, David. O. Henry's been on fire of late. Gets Jamie Wright low fastball and drives it into the seats in left center. First of two home runs on the day, four RBIs, three nothing after one, and the candy bars were flying. That was certainly good enough for Kerry Wood. He didn't strike out too many early. He got Vinny Castilla in the seventh and throws a slow curveball and backdoors Todd Helton for a strikeout. He ended up with six on the afternoon, and he pitched seven in the third inning. Nine to one, the Cubs take care of the Rockies. Oh, Henry, look at the twos. Two for two, two home runs. He's got 27. Sosa's home run has only hit Wood. Now 11 and five, he has not lost a game at home. He is eight and oh. How about the home runs from Sosa, Sosa and O. Henry? 69, just four behind the tag team duo of Junior and A-Rod. And again, they are still playing. McGuire and Langford have 63. Speaking of the Cubs, they are about to announce a deal that they have made. Uh, as soon as that gets announced, we will pass that right along to you guys. Another deal made. The San Francisco Giants, big movers last season, worked it again this year. They trade for outfielder Ellis Burks. Another right-handed bat compliments Joe Carter, who they just picked up from Baltimore. Burks, in the final year of his contract, from the Rockies' perspective, he uh, said he didn't want to play center field anymore. Meantime, they get Daryl Hamilton in return. Well, Hamilton can play center field, but he's going to be a free agent after the year. The Rockies need a center fielder for next year, and they especially need a leadoff batter, good on base percentage. Daryl Hamilton might help fill the bill in that particular situation of the leadoff hitters in baseball right now. Only Walt Weiss of the Braves in the National League has a better on-base percentage than Daryl Hamilton. And there was another name involved in this deal. Yeah, Stoops. James Troop, a, uh, a young pitcher. Well, I say he's young. He's 26, but he's got 95 strikeouts this year and 54 in the third innings. That's 15.7. The only thing you wonder, why is a 26-year-old in Class A? We'll have to do a little more investigating. Next to the Rangers, the Mets have probably made as many significant moves as any team. Trading deadline near, no. Mike Piazza hasn't gone anywhere, and he didn't do much early in this game. Inning, ending, double play in the first. Hmm. Top nine, 3-1 Mets. Franco in to close it out with a man on first. Roger Cedeno goes to right center. Butch Husky goes back. Butch, get up, Butch. Yay. Matt Luke scores. Cedeno goes into third. L.A. down one at that point. Husky thought he had it. John Franco didn't think he had that. Into the dirt it goes. Cedeno scores from third. It's 3-3. Three, three. Two batters later. Prince is on first. Eric Young to left center. And it doesn't matter if you're Butch, if you're Husky, if you're a replacement. It's just not working out there. Prince scores from first. Dodgers are up 4-3, a double for Young. Franco, L.A. wins 4-3, his fifth blown save of the year. More people sitting and expressing other sentiments than those standing clapping for him. Mike Piazza, 0 for 4, he grounded into two double plays in this game. Disappointing loss for New York. All right, so here is what the Mets were able to accomplish today. In moves that started early and continued late. Right-handed pitcher Willie Blair and catcher George Fabregas from the Arizona Diamondbacks. They give up Bernard Gilkey, right-handed pitcher Nelson Figueroa. On the bottom of the screen, New York also tonight got Tony Phillips from the Blue Jays for a minor leaguer. And uh, as far as these moves go, perhaps Phillips the most intriguing. And, uh, you know, ever since Lance Johnson left, and obviously look at Brian McRae, the fact he's playing great, okay, it worked out for them. But they needed a leadoff guy, and he's probably the guy to do it. Coming into tonight's game, the Mets leadoff hitters this year had a 315 on base percentage. A lot of people talking about the fact that Mike Piazza, not a lot of RBIs, but he hadn't had a lot of guys on in front of him. Tony Phillips, a 376 lifetime on base percentage. Not exactly sure where the Mets are going to play him. He's going to be a good pinch hitter coming off the bench, especially to start an inning. I don't know if they may stick him in right field and sacrifice a little bit of power. Uh, a lot of different options when we first got him. I thought that might free up Edgardo Alfonso in a deal, a big blockbuster, but I don't know. It doesn't look like anything like that happened. Yeah, no, we made a million rotisserie trades. Oh, tonight. it's all right. It's what it's all about. It's fun. Looks as if Phillips, according to Omar Minaya, the assistant GM there, will play right field. He can also spell the infield position. Willie Blair, they're not sure if he's going to be a starter with Armando Reynoso now pitching well or whether he's going to go to the bullpen, but they do have options, and Fabregas gives them some flexibility. Mets also make one other deal. Bill Pulsifer, all the promise lefty he got traded to the Brewers for a minor leaguer. All right, we continue now. More highlights. Kurt Schilling on the hill. Giants, Phillies, and Kurt in some problems early. Down three zip. Kent took a high pitch out. His 14th home run of the season. Giants go up by a score of four zip. Top seven, six five. Marvin Bernard's on second. Charlie Hayes at the plate. 
Up through the middle. And it's through. Tied at six. Top nine, same score. Ray Sanchez on second after he stretched a single to a double. And it works because Billy Miller deposits it in the left. Sanchez scores. Giants win 7 6. Seems like Billy Miller always makes the highlight shows late in the ball game. He's a great clutch hitter. Giants by one over the Phils, so Kurt Schilling got roughed up pretty good in this one. Nine hits, five earned runs, and five Ks. Remember back to last year, trading deadline, some rumors that Kurt was going to end up in Cleveland. That never happened. The Indians somewhat reluctant to make deals around the deadline. We move along. Diamondbacks and the Brewers, top eight in this one. Valerio de los Santos, his Major League debut. Welcome, Valerio. Look out. Devo goes yard again, his 16th, his second from the right side of the plate, it's 7-2. Mark Newfield to right center, Kareem Garcia, catch of the night. Oh, he laid out. Tried to double off Jaha at first, he got back, he was saved. Take another look. That's legit. That is full extension. Buck, happy about that outcome, 8-2. They take care of the Milwaukee Brewers. Andy Fox is playing absolutely outstanding, especially at the plate. Three for five, a couple of RBIs. Bennis gets the win. He is now eight and 11. Jeff Juden, the loser, drops to seven and 10. We go back to the Kingdom Junior. And he hits lefties just about as well as he does righties. Five, three. He gets punched out on a nasty pitch on the inside corner. The junior scuffling tonight. Yankees up 5-3 in the bottom of the eighth inning. And again, if you're just joining us, no word yet on whether Randy Johnson has been traded anywhere. He stays on the Seattle Mariners bench when we come back here on Baseball Tonight. This guy has absolutely put up MVP numbers. Could his tirade continue against Pavano and the Montreal Expos? And is there any hitter, hutter, than Mr. Eric Davis to the O's when we come back? Looking to meet new people? Try the Nightline service. The Nightline is like the personal ads in the newspaper, only we get personal over the phone. Ladies, for free access, call 216-622-7044. And guys, for a free 60-minute trial, just call 216-622-7070. With Nightline, it's easy to meet people, and it's fast, very fast. Pick up the phone now and you could be talking to lots of dynamite available, local men and women, in seconds. The Nightline has hundreds of callers from right here in Cleveland. You can send and receive messages or connect live for a private conversation. It starts with talk and it can go anywhere. So don't spend another second wishing you could meet someone. Do it. Ladies, for free access, call 216-622-7044. And guys, for a free 60-minute trial, just call 216-622-7070. Update City, we've checked the Red Sox. They got a lot of runs in the top half of the eighth, but guess who's coming back? Edmonds delivers De Sarcina. And it's 5-2, and they're still in the bottom of the eighth. David West is on the mound for the Red Sox, but the Red Sox now have... Uh, Acquired Greg Swindell and Orlando Merced from the Minnesota Twins for three minor leaguers. Well, they, they need some help in their bullpen. They got some guys hurt down there. They sent Mahay down, and David West, a left-hander, hasn't been very effective. Swindell's been pretty good for the Minnesota Twins the last two years. Greg Swindell, Orlando Merced to the Red Sox for three minor leaguers. To the Padres and the Expos, Ken Caminiti, ding-dong, that pitch is... Dead. Number 19 for Caminiti, 2 nothing Padres. Next batter, Greg Vaughn, Rip City. Caminiti's got 19. Double that to get to Vaughn, who's got 38, it's 3-zip. Kevin Brown, Vladimir Guerrero, he goes the other way. Two-run score, that made it 3-2 Padres. And remember... What would that tell you? After the first inning earlier, Carlos Perez, Mark Rosalonic were told, you know what, guys? Moving on to greener pastures. Both go to L.A. to play for the Dodgers. Carl Pavano, Carlos Hernandez.